Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering HPE Discover 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's coverage, exclusive coverage of Hewlett Packard Enterprise HPE Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media with my co-founder Dave Vellante and also co-host. Our next guest is Alistair Winner, Vice President HPE Point Next Portfolio. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you, great to be here. So, okay, Point Next Portfolio, Point Next new presence. Take a minute, Alistair, just explain Point Next how everything fits together. I know it's a little bit redundant for you, but let's start that off. Sure, great. No, I'd be uh, delighted to explain. So, as you're aware, the company has gone through a number of transformations and transitions, one of which was the spin merge of enterprise services to CSC, now DXC technology, and we're, they're here on the show floor. So, great partner of ours. Um, but of course, that created a lot of noise in the market and, and confusion, honestly, with our customers as to whether or not HPE was in the services business or not. So uh, the idea of the rebranding was to make it very clear, services is critically important. It's, it's sort of the third part of our company strategy. So we have hybrid IT, IT edge, and the expertise to make it happen, and that expertise is HPE point next. And the branding was, was chosen deliberately not to, to sort of replicate what you would find in other traditional vendors. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about services in our brand. Um, and Point Next is literally to help our customers point at what's next in their digital transformation journey. So that's where the, the brand comes from. So what's the brand promise for Point uh, Next? I mean, for, for, uh, for, for us it's about giving uh, customers access to our expertise and we talk about really a, a complete life cycle of, a, of, a, of an experience. So previously we had consulting and support, those terms have gone now, so we, we're looking clearly end to end a, a customer's experience and I'm really starting with the outcome they're looking for and then having the advisory, professional and operational services that, that connect those things together to deliver the, uh, to deliver the outcome. And what is, what, what is the spin merge made up of? HPE services and was it the CSC? Yeah, so, so we had a very significant, um, really IT outsourcing business, which was called Enterprise Services. It was the previous EDS mm -hmm. business. So yeah, that spun out and joined CSC to become DXC Great. technology. Right, so how should customers look at you vis-a-vis -vis HPE and the enterprise partners? Obviously they're the combination. How do you guys, where's the lines? Where do you guys shake hands? Where's the handoff? What are some of the engagements like? Share with us some of the day-to-day -day tactical um, execution of your of, of the portfolio. So I, I, I guess um, I mean re we're still relatively um, new in terms of the of the brand, and we're we're yeah, we're trying to re really connect the dots internally to ensure that we uh, you know we present um, to our customers a, a seamless experience. I guess one of the things that the the spin merge has enabled us to do is to engage much more actively with systems integrators and other consulting companies where previously it was quite challenging to do so. So, um, you know, with the likes of PwC and KPMG and Wipro and so previously we had a, I mean, they were interested in buying our technology, but from a services point of view, there was always some conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have clarity, right? So, so part of our strategy is to really ensure we're engaging very actively with uh, systems integrators. And likewise, um, we're also working very actively with our reseller partners. So you know, clearly HP has a long history of partnering and we have a very- channel. Yeah, cha yeah cha as we call it, channel. And, and, the, and our channel partners are also going through a transformation because selling hardware is no longer a sustainable business for them in the long term. So really helping them to transform their business from being product led uh, to services led. Um, and I guess the, I mean, the other thing we're really focused on is uh, you know, what are the solution areas, what are the, um, the business outcomes that, that we as an organization can really focus on? Uh, because as you know, digital transformation is a huge, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. about the, the, um, the decline in the server business from a business model standpoint, but because we were saying on our opening, on our editorial segment that, you know, a lot of people get hung up on that, but when reality, the numbers are all pointing to massive growth. Wikibon just put out a seminal report around true private cloud at a $250 billion opportunity, market TAM. So that's just 
private cloud, that's just yes. <laughs> cloud liking your infrastructure on-prem. That's not including hybrid cloud. So when you factor in true private cloud, which is current state situation, with hybrid cloud, and then now the, what I call the kind of the long-reaching but viable vision of multi-cloud, yep. those are really key dots that are connecting for customers. So okay, margins of hardware might shift to places, but the services, whether it's IOT and app integration, really is at the center of this. It, it, it absolutely is at the center of it, and, uh, and of course, I mean, there is still clearly value from our products and our product innovation, um, but the way we present that value to our customers has to, has to change. And uh, you, I mean, you're, you're quite right. Um, many of the customers, in fact, the majority of the customers I talk to really view private cloud as their principal uh, delivery vehicle in, you know, internally, IT view it as their principal delivery vehicle. And what we're doing through solutions like flexible capacity is enabling uh, an IT team to, you know, to align the supply and demand of, of, of IT um, through a, um, uh, an OPEX model rather than a CAPEX model and really helping them right size the environment so they can manage the fluctuations that they see. Because you know, with, with digital there are, you know, there are many, um, or many more, the frequency of change is much, uh, is much more well, So the dollars are shifting to services and certainly the edge, but you brought up channel. This is a huge opportunity because now the channel's reconfiguring, both at the global system integrator side, as well as what was traditionally VARs and VAVs and ISVs, yes. as they get closer to the customer. So you guys are kind of the glue layer between what was once HPE, get some training, speeds and feeds, to much more solution oriented. Any trends there that you can highlight that should be notable for customers in around how the services is leading some of that change at the front lines? Well, I, I mean, you're absolutely right. And um, I, I would say, you know, for us, it's about outcomes, you know, looking, we're not trying to sell the customer something, we're looking for an outcome that the customer needs and then translating that into, into um, a chain of technology, people and process um, uh, changes that they, that they need to implement. And there are, I mean, there are many examples on the show floor, actually, of, of, of services-led solutions. You know, we have the um, Intelligent Spaces Cube, for example, where you know, we're helping customers to manage you know, very valuable real estate in their, in their property, you know, where you're always looking for spaces to meet your colleagues. When you turn up, you want to, it to be digitally enabled. You know, we can combine all of these great technologies, you know, whether they're HPE or, or, or partner ISV technology into a solution, and then, and then present it to the customer as a service. So you consume it as you use it, as opposed to buying all the pieces, having to integrate it together yourself, you own and operate. That's, that's clearly the model that, uh, that's the model of the past. Alistair, the CIOs in our community, if I could summarize, are telling us, look, I got to run the business. I got legacy systems that I have to manage. I have to grow the business. I have new apps, maybe some of those are IOT, certainly many of them are data oriented, AI, big data, whatever you want to call it. And then I have to transform the business. So that's their digital transformation, yes. certainly their IT transformation, their hybrid component. So are there, is that a valid way to sort of look at the, the, the business? And then how specifically is Point Next helping in those three broad areas? So I, 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 would, I would completely agree. I mean, in fact, the way that we think about our portfolio is one of um, accelerating what's next. So this, you know, this digital transformation, this change, and how do we accelerate and, and, and make customers much more agile uh, in addressing the business requirements? Because um, you know, IT and the business are, are really synonymous now with each other. It's not, a back, it's not a back office thing anymore. It's the way that, that a customer engages with their customers with uh, their employees, with their partners. I mean, it is the interface now in which we work. Um, so yeah, we're all about accelerating. How do we accelerate uh, that? And then, you're absolutely right, the majority of our customers have an existing install base. They have many layers of, or, or, or previous generations of technology. You know, it's, um, it's homogeneous, it's complex. You know, there, there are different ways of managing all of these assets. And, and the way we help there is really by simplifying. So we're encouraging our customers to, to work with us, allow us to manage the complexity, which frees up resources and money for them to then go and invest in the accelerate, accelerating what's next. 
So we're doing, for example, um, activities like, uh, we call it an operational support service. So we're, we're monitoring and managing remotely the assets of the company that the, the, the IT team would have historically have done. You know, you'd go into like a mission control center and see all the, <laughs> you know, all the lights monitor. I mean, we, we can do that for a customer. You know, the customer doesn't have to do that anymore. And the, and the resources that that frees up, they can go and invest in the, in, the, in their digital transformation. So that's not outsourcing per se, but no. it, you're certainly managing infrastructure on behalf of your customer. They own the assets, it's on, it's on their books. Yeah. So, so we can do it in a traditional you know, CapEx model where it's on their books, or we can include it inside of a flexible capacity arrangement where they're, you know, they're actually paying per, per use, and that experience is part of the, of the solution. So we can integrate it into a pay per use model. I mean, it seems like one of the things that HP Services has done over the last several years is sort of envision and reimagine that entire services experience and try to make it as cloud-like as possible. Yes. I mean, you got ahead of that. I mean, this has been, I don't know, three, four, five years in, in the making. So, kind of give us an update on how that's gone and then, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how far did, did you get? Are you at a five, a six, a nine? And then what's new from here? So it's a great question. So I, I'd probably give us a six, I, I, we'd probably at a six, I would say. So the, um, the offer itself, so flexible capacity is, um, I mean, we've had it in the market for five years now. So yeah, we know how to do this and it's very successful. We've never lost a customer. We have net promoter scores in the high 90s. So yeah, where we've landed it, customers love it, right? So we, we know it's very successful. And really what we now need to do as a company is sort of amplify that model as our principal go to market. Okay, so we're a product company, we sell products. So we, there's a pivot that we're approaching, I would say, where we need to you know, use that really as being the lead, uh, the lead model. So I think, I think a solution designed for IT, where, where IT consume units of IT, we've got that nailed, right? I think, I think, it's, I think it's great. Um, but flexible capacity doesn't address every customer's requirements. So for, a, for an enterprise customer, it works really nicely. For a tier two, tier three service provider, it works very nicely. We've got a whole tranche of customers uh, who really don't have the scale to benefit from flexible capacity that still want insights into their utilization and, uh, and their capacity. So we're actually, uh, as part of our Gen 10 launch, we're introducing something called HPE Capacity Care Service. So we're sort of extracting the secret source from F uh, flexible capacity. Um, we're not actively managing the capacity on behalf of the customer, but we're giving the customer the assets to do it themselves. So that will be available by the end of this um, calendar year. So we're very excited about that. And the other thing we're doing is, is actually to, 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 to move away from selling units of IT service like virtual machines or containers or cores and actually trying to focus on outcomes. So we're starting to talk about things like backup as a service, big data as a service with Hadoop. So again, really trying to create a platform that the customer can consume and all the complexity is abstracted and we present it as a service. So we're at the early stages there, we've got very um, big aspirations for that. We think that's the way that, that, that our customers will want to, to buy from us. You know, they don't want the, the pieces, they want, they want a platform, they want an outcome as a service. Alistair, great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing. My final question for you to end the segment is, pretend I'm a CXO, CIO, CDO, CSO, whatever, CEO. Alistair, bottom line me. How are you going to make IT easier for me and simpler? Go. So I'm going to make it easier by uh, ensuring that uh, we present you with our expertise. We're going to create uh, an environment through which you can consume IT. Um, and we're going to accelerate your digital transformation. All right, accelerating change. Obviously, the digital economy's here. There's no doubt about it. It's got a little cloud flavor, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. It's the Cube bringing you all the data here from HPE Discover. More live action for three days of exclusive coverage with the Cube. We'll be right back with more after this short break.